Hello and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the Python AP Scheduler Library. The AP Scheduler Library stands for Advanced Python Scheduler. And as the name implies, it's very powerful and very feature rich. And from my experience, it's the most powerful Python scheduling library that I've seen out of all the ones that I've seen, that is. So let's begin. The first thing we'll do is take a look at some basic terminology. A job is basically a task, a task or a function that you want executed. Like if you want a print function executed after 10 seconds, that's basically a job, a job that gets scheduled. Schedulers are the things that schedule these jobs. Triggers are ways of customizing and, you know, changing the way we can schedule things, like whether the schedule is interval based or a fixed date, or there are many other things that we'll take a look at in today's video. Now it's time to explore the code. The first thing that we need to do is install this library if you haven't already. pip install ap scheduler. I already have it installed, so it's just going to say requirement already satisfied. Okay, now the first thing that we'll do is import a scheduler. All right, there are two types of schedulers either a background scheduler or a blocking scheduler. Okay, these are two types of schedulers available. And the first thing that we'll do is look at the difference between these two types of schedulers. Okay. And before all that, of course, we're going to define a job, a job that needs to be executed. Since this is a tutorial, we'll just make something really simple, like display. And all this does is it displays a message. Or let's leave out the parameters for now and just type in a simple message here. This function has been executed. The first thing that we'll do is create a scheduler object. We'll start off with the blocking scheduler, then we'll add a job, all right? We're going to add this job to our scheduler like this. Okay, don't pass in parameters over here. Don't pass in parentheses, only pass in the name of the function. Then we're going to pass in how we want this job to be triggered. There are three different ways, all right? Three different triggers, and we'll start off with interval. Interval based triggers are when you want to execute a job after a certain amount of time, after a certain interval, like after five seconds. Okay, so if I do this, then scheduler dot start, let me just lower that down to three and then execute this code. You'll notice that after three seconds, this function has been executed. See? And uh, it's also important to note that this is repeating constantly. So uh, it's not going to stop. It's going to it's going to execute forever, basically. So how do we stop this? Well, for this, we can remove the job once it's been executed once. But that's only if you want it to only execute once. If you want it to execute like every hour or something, you could do hour hours is equal to one, for example. And this would execute a job every hour. And then like hours, there's also minutes. And then there's also years and all those kind of parameters. So how do we stop this from happening? Well, you see, whenever we call this function, it returns a job ID and we can use this job ID to cancel the job. Let me just bring this back. Okay. And then put this over here, job ID dot remove. And now this will only print out once because when this function gets called once, it's going to remove the job. And as you can see, this function only executes once. No matter how much I wait now, it's not going to print again because this job has been removed. Okay. But as you can see, the code is still blocking. I haven't actually, the code is still running. The program is still running. It hasn't stopped. That's because this is a blocking scheduler and it runs eternally. Basically, it's not going to stop executing until I manually shut it down. For that, we need to call a specific function. Let me just, uh, close this terminal and start up a new one. Uh, wait, before we start up a new one, we need to disable this scheduler. So we do shut down. Wait is equal to false. Okay, now the wait parameter, we can do two things. We can either say wait is equal to true or wait is equal to false. Wait is equal to false will immediately shut it down, even if there's already some jobs being executed, because we can actually have multiple jobs in the same scheduler. So we do wait is equal to true if we want to wait for the other jobs to end first. Otherwise, we can just do false to force shutdown. So if I execute this code now, 
you'll see that this print statement executes once and then the code shuts down. See, now we have control of our program back again. So that's what a blocking scheduler is, how to create it, how to schedule a job, and how to shut it down. Let's just explore one more thing. I'm going to just remove this, okay? And uh, let's pass in a parameter. Let me show you how to pass in parameters. So this is message, and it's gonna print out the message that you pass into it. Okay, so let's just add this. All right, now, how do we pass in a parameter to the display function? We can't do this, obviously. We can't do that. That'll make it a function call, not the function name. So what we're gonna do is args for arguments. Then we pass in a list over here. So hello, hello world. Now let's execute this code and see what happens. All right, there we go. See, now we're passing in arguments to our job function. Okay, that's how it works. And I just used control C to break out of there. Okay, now let's explore how we can schedule multiple jobs. All right, just to show this once so that you can understand that this actually works. Okay, we'll give this one three seconds, this one five seconds, and let's call this one task one or job one. Let's call this one job two. And let's execute this code. Okay, so three seconds passed, job one. And yeah, there we go. See, this is how these are both working simultaneously and asynchronously. Okay, now let me just break out of this again. And now let's move on to the background scheduler. Now, this is a bit different in the way it works. If I change to the background scheduler and then execute this code, see what happens. See? It just ended the program without uh, doing anything. That's it. Nothing happened. So why is this? That's because the background scheduler runs in the background. And if the main program ends its execution before the background scheduler gets to do anything, the background scheduler just shuts down as well. The blocking scheduler basically blocks the flow of the main program. So whenever we call the start function with the blocking scheduler, then the main program is also stuck on this function. Let me show you a good way of how I can you know, show this to you. I'm going to put a print statement over here called hello world. All right, now on the background scheduler, if I, wait, sorry. If I run this code now, you'll see this print statement execute, okay? But if I switch to the blocking scheduler, this is not gonna execute. That's because it's stuck on this function. Okay, see, it's not executing. And only if I, and actually it's never gonna execute because if I just terminate it like this, then you know, the only condition that this would actually execute with the blocking scheduler is if we terminated the blocking scheduler using the shutdown command. Okay, and let's try that actually. We'll do scheduler dot shutdown, wait is equal to false. Okay, now I'm gonna run this code. And once it, just executes this once, then it prints out hello world. See, that's how this works. So yeah, that's the difference between background and blocking schedulers, and which one you use depends on your requirements and your scenario. Background schedulers are very useful when you have an application running, a, a large application, and you, you just need something going on in the background. But a blocking scheduler may be more useful in a small script that's just dedicated to scheduling tasks. Again, that depends on your scenario. It's better to just understand the differences between the two of them. So when you need to use them, you actually can do so. And just, just because, I'm gonna show you how you can use a background scheduler similarly to a blocking scheduler, if for some reason you need to. I'm going to set up an infinite loop, or actually let's not do that. I'm going to just use the sleep function, the sleep function from the time module in Python, and then we'll execute this code. So let's see what happens. I've blocked the execution of the main program for 10 seconds. So now we can see all of these uh, messages getting printed out. Oh, wait, I shut it down. Let me do that again. Okay. And now we can see those these jobs executing. Okay. Now that we have the main concepts down, let's take a look at the other types of triggers. There's cron and date that we haven't explored yet. So let's begin with those. 
I'm going to start with the date trigger, all right? And the date trigger executes only once. It executes just once at a specific date. And to specify this date, I'm going to import the date time module. Okay. Now we're going to pass in the run date parameter and we're going to create a date time object. This date time object, it's very customizable. We can pass in a year. We can pass in a month like uh, 2nd February, wait, sorry, February, then the day like 20th February, and then an hour like um, 12, 12 p.m., then 00, zero in the hours and minutes. So basically this code, this job will execute on 2023, 20th of February, 12 p.m. Okay, so that's what the date parameter does. And it's too much of a hassle to try and coordinate this to run right now. So I'm just going to leave it like this. Okay. And let's just move on. Let's explore some uh, different things that we can do. We can also, uh, instead of using a date time object, what we can do is specify a string like this. 2022, for example, uh, the fourth month, the 30th of the day, then leave a space. All right. And then you can write out the time like zero eight colon zero zero colon zero zero all right so uh i'm not sure if we can omit this or not uh i don't know but yeah this code right here uh we can see what it does okay we can pass in a string instead if that's what you want to use all right so let's take a look at the last type of trigger called cron we saved the best for last because the cron trigger is actually the most powerful and also the most flexible we can do really cool stuff with it, like hour is equal to 17 and minute is equal to 30. Now what this is going to do is execute every day at 5.30 p.m. That's what this is, basically. It's kind of like a combination between interval and date. And it even has some cool stuff that you can only do with cron. Like, for example, we can do this, right? And this is going to execute at 5 p.m. every day, every minute. All right, let me just change this to two seconds. Okay, and now this is going to execute every second at 5 p.m. And where I'm at, it's currently three. Okay, so if I execute this now and just change this to a blocking scheduler and then just change this as well. Now, if I execute this, uh, not sure why that's there, but it's this should execute. Oh, wait wrong hour is 3 p.m. and that is 3 a.m. so I should do 15 okay and execute this and now this should execute every second see pretty cool right now an another cool thing that we can do is slash 5 now this will execute every 5 seconds at 3 p.m. every day see and now it's executing every 5 seconds Pretty cool, right? Now, what else can we do with this? One thing that's kind of important to understand is that if you don't specify something, it automatically means it's going to happen every day or every month. Like if you don't specify the month parameter, it's automatically going to execute every month. Right now, I've said hour is equal to 15. So it's only going to execute at the 15th hour, 3 p.m. But if I remove this, now this job is basically going to execute every five seconds even if it's the 15th hour or not. Now, let's take a look at some other parameters like month. Month, for example, uh, has some interesting things that you can do. You can say one to 12, which is the same thing as leaving it, you know, default, because this means execute every month, execute from the month of one to 12, okay? And we can also narrow down this range by saying one to six or one to eight, but what happens if you want to execute from one to eight, but you don't want to execute the third or the fourth month? So what you can do is specify multiple ranges, like one to three, then four to eight. Wait, no, five to eight. This way we skipped the fourth one. See, just don't leave any spaces in there. That might cause a problem. And obviously you can just specify a single month here as well if you want to. All right. Now, just to prove 
that this parameter is working and all, let's just execute this once because it's February right now, so this should execute every five seconds. And there we go, it works. Okay, and yeah, there. So let's try something else. Let's try day. Day again is pretty normal. You can pass in the normal stuff one, two, three, whatever you want to. Or again, you can leave it at the default value by not specifying it or just explicitly saying asterisk. Or you can also use the asterisk parameter over here, like this every seven days, or every three days, or every two days, or every 30 days. Okay. And um, we can also say unique stuff like this third of Friday. Now, what this is going to do is execute on the third Friday of that month. Again, that's pretty unique. You might not need it, it's pretty niche. But again, these are the kind of cool things that you can do. And I can't list them all down here. This is something that you'll need to look up yourself. But I just want to give you an idea of how the AP Scheduler works and how flexible and customizable it really is. All right. So these are the basics we've covered pretty much. Uh, there's obviously more, and we might make more videos on this. I might make a video just on cron, uh, the cron trigger, and then we'll take a look at it in more detail. There's even more cool features that are currently under development in AP Scheduler. There's a new version about to be released, so I'll definitely make a video once that version is out. I'll include all relevant links in the description below as they become available. Do subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and if you have any suggestions for AP Scheduler content, do let me know in the comment section below, and then we can consider making a video on it. See you guys in the next video.